between the elite, between the uh, conservatives. The whole world seems to be in an uproar right now, not knowing what's coming in the future. They're trying to push for a new world order, and this is the elite, the uh, liberals, um, people who say they are Democrat, although, of course, not all Democrats, I'm sure, believe in this. Uh, certainly the Luciferian Satanists and the globalists believe in this end times change or shift that they're talking about, where they're trying to support uh, the whole world getting together in a new world order. We've heard a lot about the new world order in the last few years, but it's getting intense now. And it seems like the world is going into a uh, catharsis and a change. And there's a battle in the heaven, in the second heaven, between Lucifer and uh, God. Now, Lucifer uh, was fallen. The Lord sent him down here after uh, he left heaven, after his pride, when he came and said he wanted to be God. And and, uh, it talks about it in Isaiah, about how Lucifer said, I will sit on the throne of God. I will be like the Most High. He wanted to be God. So there was a big mutiny up there in heaven. Uh, And this was before the earth was uh, formed. And a third of the angels, it says in Revelation, said a third came down with Lucifer and believed him. And the Lord sent him down to the earth. So he was in hell, sent to hell. Now, when Eve was, and Adam and Eve were on the earth, and God created Adam, and then He created Eve, they they were righteous. God walked with them in the garden. Uh, they had not known sin, and Eve, uh, God had told them definitely uh, they could eat everything in the garden. They could do anything they wanted but they could not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and it was a beautiful tree but it was a test because god had created mankind with something called free will and you know god did that because he didn't want to create a bunch of robots he didn't want to create a bunch of uh his creation that would just worship him because they were programmed that way and that there was nothing else they could do. They had no option. And what, what kind of uh, free love would that be, agape love between each other, uh, would that be? Uh, we could create robots that take care of us. We could create things that help us, but there's no will involved in your car. You just, you know, put the key in and turn on the ignition, and it does whatever you want it to do. God didn't want people like that. He wanted people that loved him out of their own free will. So he created Adam and Eve with their own free will, and he put them to a test. And he put the tree in the garden, and then he told man that they do not partake of that tree. But the enemy came in as a beguiled as a serpent, disguised as probably a beautiful-looking creature that looked, uh, look, didn't look ugly or anything, because that's what the devil does, and came to Eve and told her that, that you could eat of that tree of knowledge and good and evil and be like God's and be wise. And because she saw that it was a beautiful tree and the fruit was beautiful and it looked delicious, she believed the lie of the enemy and partook of the fruit. And then she became evil, knowing uh, good and evil. And it came into her heart. And the first thing she wanted to do was give Adam the apple so that, or the fruit. Actually, it was a fruit. So that he would take it too and be awakened like her and be against God and evil, which is what I think the, the fruit did to her. So she gave it to him, and he knew it was wrong. Now, Adam knew it was wrong. He wasn't deceived like Eve. He knew it was wrong. But because he loved her so much and because she was his wife, she talked him into it and he took her the fruit. And that's the start of the whole thing of good and evil. And then there became a separation between God and man at that point. Because God is holy, God is righteous. He has no evil or sin in him. He cannot be a part of the evil. 
So he sent a very powerful angel down to the earth and took Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. And they were not allowed to go back in because there was a tree in the Garden of Eden that was the tree of life everlasting. And if they partook of that tree, they would have stayed in a fallen state forever and ever, never able to reconcile themselves with God. So to stop that, he forbade them from going back into the garden. And they went out and the earth became desolate. All the beauty, I believe the whole earth was beautiful. But after the fall of man, everything started corroding and dying. So that was the beginning of all that. So mankind became evil. And then there was a small uh, selection of people uh, in the Old Testament after Adam and Eve. Most of them were all evil. But there was one man named Noah that was righteous in God's eyes. And God saved the earth through the flood. And only Noah and his family made it. But that evil seed came through. And we're not sure whether it was one of uh, Noah's son's wife's children somehow or whether they survived the flood. But that evil seed came through and we see it in the bloodline of the serpent seed, which is unto this day. And I didn't want to go into too much history, but I wanted to let you know that the earth has been in a constant fight between good and evil ever since then. And these people... And Nephilim, which are the children of the fallen angel, and evil forces are still in the world trying to promote perilous times and evil times. So here we are in the end times. It's getting very wicked again. And in Matthew, it talks about it being like the days of Noah, which means that right before the flood, it was just like it is today. It was violence on the earth. There was a huge uh, amount of people that had been deceived by the Nephilim into creating a uh, golden age or a new world order just before the flood where there was no more God, no more Jesus. Everything was cast out of Jewish and Christian. It was all gone. And, in fact, I don't even think the Jewish people were there but uh, before Noah in that sense that they are today. But there was a hatred of anything godly. And they created this new world order on the earth. And it says that all the things that are, were back then that they're discovering are happening now. And the hybrids, the mixing of ma- animals with human genes, the, the mixing of the human DNA with the fallen angel technology, it's all coming to fruition now. It's all out in the forefront now. And uh, not too long ago, Uh, most everyone in the world would have thought this was all just completely ridiculous. But because of technology, and I believe it's fallen angel technology, and everything that the Bible says would happen as the days of Noah are happening right now, we're getting back into the same scenario again with these fallen angels deceiving the people on the earth to become, like they said, knowing good and evil and even having immortality in them by taking the DNA of the fallen angels. And and they hate God. They hate the Jewish people. They hate Christians. They want, they don't want to have anything to do with that. They have a vehement hatred for Christianity. So this is all very demonic, very demonic. And now we're in 2017, and there's a lot of fear out there and confusion over the fact that now that seems to be that a, a disclosure is coming about the UFO phenomena and that the UFOs, and all of that is, is ramping up. And now they're even talking about the the fallen angels uh, being trapped down in Antarctica in ice. And they're being sought out. And they're going to come out and come on the earth and rule over us. And that the humans are just going to be their slaves. Well, this is all conspiracy theory. This is all what we hear on YouTube and things that people are talking about. Some of it's uh true and some of it's not true and we must use the discerning of the Holy Spirit that God has given us when we watch these things 
and listen on YouTube to discern because God has given us that, that spirit of discernment so that we can discern good and evil and that we can discern what's right and what's not right in our hearts. And, you know, even as Christians, we're not perfect. There's going to be some Christians that agree with some things that they hear and some Christians that don't agree with some things that they hear. But I want to, the Lord has really put it on my heart lately to let everyone know, and it, it's just been really strong on my my spirit, to tell everybody that we must be in in a loving relationship with one another, an agape love, a brotherly love. And we must stop fighting between ourselves over doctrine and silly little things that don't make any difference. It's very important that we love one another. Now, we can't disagree about the essentials of the faith, which are the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, begotten of the Father. He came to earth through Mary as a virgin birth and became and was and is the Son of God in human form, lived on the earth, ministered for 33 years, and then he healed the sick, cast out demons, and preached that he is the only way to the Father. And then he died on a cruel cross at Calvary and and shed his blood for us, that in shedding that blood for us, for all the sins of humanity, he became that one lamb sacrifice. And that he shed his blood for all of us that we would be reunited with God and go to heaven forever and ever. And that's what he teaches and that's what I believe is the truth. And I believe that that was so important, what he did, and that we must believe that. And and when we believe in that, we end up, unfortunately, now being ostracated from others who believe that it's baloney and that um, we can all be gods. We don't have to have God ruling over us. We don't need Jesus. We can just be gods ourselves and live eternally in sort of a paradise, quasi-paradise here on earth. Well, that's Satan's lie. He always brings you beautiful things and tricks you. He does this with children. He shows these cute little cartoons and, and brings them little toys and things that seem very innocent. But He fills them with evil spirits. So they take these beautiful little things, these cute little cuddly toys, and then they end up getting demonized. And then they don't, before they know it, they're miserable. They're hurting. They're having all kinds of nightmares. So, you know, the devil hasn't changed his plans. Whatever age you are, he just gives you a a toy or a pretend lie or something to pacify your lusts and your for for, uh, any kind of vice that you may have and he gives you what you want and then he hooks you in and then he's got you and then you can't get out and then you become his slave and then you become tormented by a life looking over your shoulder and afraid that lucifer is going to get you if you don't do what he says so i I wouldn't want to be holding to that kind of god I am believing in a God of love, a God that cares and loves for us, that doesn't lie, that doesn't cheat and steal to get what they want, that isn't selfish. And one of the other biggest things in these perilous times that I see is a spirit of selfishness. Everyone is just so selfish for what they want, what they want to feel, how good they want it to be, how much they want to have uh, materially how much food they want to eat, where they want to go on all these vacations. And they're, they're um, worshiping pleasure. They're worshiping uh, money. They're worshiping uh, just being in, in pleasure and not being in any kind of pain or any kind of commitment or any kind of work that they need to do to get what they want. They just want to mooch, mooch and live off of others who can pay for them while they go off and have fun. Because having fun is the supreme good, which is what they believe, and it's not true. So I just wanted to paint a picture of what I felt was going on today in the world, 
and let you know that God is telling us not to be afraid. There's been all kinds of things coming down the pike, and especially on YouTube, I'm afraid, of being so frightened that we're going to be snatched out of our homes, put in FEMA camps, and fed rats or something, and be killed. But, you know, God is the one that holds all of that. And there is a definite distinction between the tribulation saints and the bride of Christ saints, I believe. I believe the scripture teaches about the bride of Christ saints, that we are the bride of Christ. If we worship Jesus, if we're righteous in our lives, if we do not sin, and if we make us uh, uh, fall a little bit or goof up here and there, he is able to forgive us and keep us on the right track. But we must want to serve him. We must want to have all the vices and sins and evil things out of our lives. We cannot be on serving the devil in some ways and serving God in other ways. It doesn't work like that. We must clean up our homes, clean up our lives, clean up and not have ungodly friends. We must live a righteous life if we're going to be in the kingdom of God and if we're going to make it into the kingdom and be counted worthy. Because there were the five versions that Matthew 25 speaks about, the parable of the ten versions. Five were foolish and five were wise. And the five wise had oil in them. And they were ready when the bridegroom came. And he came as a thief in the night and he took them. But the other ones weren't ready, and they were out buying oil when Jesus had come, which means that they weren't ready when he came back. So we want to be ready when Jesus comes back. And what the devil likes to do is to promote fear in us, fear that we've lost our salvation, fear that we're going to be left behind when the rapture happens and um, we're going to be left in the horrible tribulation. Uh, The devil tries to make us want to be uh, afraid of God. He wants us to make us angry with God. Things that he he does to us and things like that. Well, this is the devil doesn't ever change his tactics. He just vain imaginations which is spoken of in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 and 4 and 5. When you get these little vain thoughts in your head, that's not you. That's the enemy putting thoughts in your head, saying, God doesn't love you. Look how bad you were the other day. Look what you did. You're not going to make it. You don't measure up. Those are a bunch of lies. And when fear, especially the spirit of fear, comes at you, it can be very tormenting, very sudden, and very horrible. And you can even have these horrible panic attacks and feel like you're going to die. When you get that happen to you, you just, it's not, it's hard at first, but you come at it and you say, no, I come against the spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief. I bind you with a threefold cord. I cast you into the lake of fire. You cannot torment me. No, get away from me now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, when you do it with authority and you tell it to go, for at first it's kind of shocked, but it knows, oh boy, this This Christian knows their stuff. I'm not going to get away with the things that I get away with with them. They don't believe it. They know their spiritual warfare, but they have to obey you. Because by Jesus Christ being our power of attorney, Jesus Christ said we have all power over serpents and scorpions and all powers of hell. Nothing by any means will hurt us, and that's Luke 10, 19. He means it. But that emotion of fear sometimes can be so strong that we just get engulfed by it and permeated by it and become terrified. Well, that gives the enemy power and it gives them an open door to come in and torment us. So when we start seeing this happen, we realize it's not us. We're not going crazy. It's coming in from the outside. It's the devil is attacking us. We've got to come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Put on the whole armor of God every day. It's very important that in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about putting on the armor of God. This isn't just rhetorical. This is a physical, actual 
speaking it out every day, physically putting on the spiritual armor on our bodies every day against the enemy. And when I have found that I do that every day, I have found the attacks are a lot less vigilant, have a lot more power over the enemy when we do that every day. So there's a lot of Christians out there that think that putting on the armor of God is only allegorical, that it's a figure of speech, that it, you don't actually do it. But that's so far from the truth, and it's a lie from the pit of hell, because the devil doesn't want you to know how powerful that armor is. And also, with putting on the armor, a powerful way to come against the enemy is to anoint ourselves with oil and put a, a, it on your finger and then put it on your forehead or wherever you feel like you want to put the oil. It's okay on wherever you put it. And um, you can put it on your body and say, In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I anoint myself with this holy oil. And when you anoint yourself with the oil in the name of Jesus, that keeps the enemy. He's have a harder time to come at you because that oil is something that he gives us to protect us against evil forces. Now, when you anoint your house with oil on the doorpost, and you put oil in the rooms of your house, and you tell the devil to get out of your rooms, get out of the house. You take all ungodly uh, little things that you've bought. There's a lot of things that we buy that we don't think are ha- we think are harmless, and things that gifts that have been given to us by other people, and we think they're harmless. We bring them into our house, and they become powerful little places where the demons can attack us. So the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to walk around your house. And pull out anything you feel is demonic, anything that's evil, uh, off your walls, anything, no matter what it is and how much it has cost, take it out, get rid of it. Because it is harming you. So once we sanctify our homes and put the oil in our rooms and on the house, doorposts and things like that, and bless the rooms, we are keeping the demons out of our house. And play worship music in your house. Play Christian worship music in your house. And these are some of the things that you should do to keep the enemy out. So we're going to go on ahead with the last 35 minutes because I believe that um, Pastor Bill has not been able to get in. I'm back on the air now. So I'm just going to keep... Oh, there you go. (laughs) Yes, we we had to reboot the computer there. Okay, Pastor. Amen, amen. Okay. Well, I've just been speaking about the fear and perilous times and how people need to protect themselves from the Amen, enemy. amen. You know, let's go into a little break here. Be right back. Okay. Do you sometimes feel that you just can't control your thoughts? Do you feel hounded by bad memories of the past that still feel alive today? Are you hurting on the inside? If so, Luke 418 Counseling Center can help free you from the pursuit of that mental and spiritual anguish. Pastor Bill French has spent a lifetime helping the tormented and healing the wounded. Free yourself from the past and free yourself from the hurt you're feeling today. If you are experiencing repeated feelings of anger, hatred, lack of self-control, anxiety, or confusion, call the Freedom Doctor, Pastor Bill French, today to set up a consultation. 951-402-8530. Pastor Bill French at the Luke 418 Counseling Center is a specialized Christian-based counselor. Call us today, 951-402-8530. Welcome back, folks, to the Luke 418 Radio Talk Show, the leading cutting edge of Christian radio. My name is Pastor Bill French, and you were listening to Pastor Valerie French, my wife. Pastor Valerie are we to fear in these perilous times? No, we're not to have any fear. What, what scriptures do you find that we can hold on to when we start seeing change take place around us where it isn't the same old, same old every day as we get up, we uh, go to work, we come home and... and um, you know, go to sleep, and next day we do the same routine over again. When we start seeing uh, threats to the America, like we saw in North Korea, uh, threaten to send uh, nuclear missiles over here to uh, destroy us, and as we've been seeing uh, wars and rumors of wars around the world, 
And uh, America is not stable right now in the emotional realm, in the mental realm, because uh, there is such a uh, conflict and um, uh, seems like an uprising of perilous times against the uh, government right now. Um, what do you think? What verses can we hold on to in the Word of God? Well, there's many verses about God protecting us. There's verse in 2 Timothy 1, seven says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So right there, it's telling you that we have power through the Holy Spirit, through the agape love, and we should have a sound mind. We should not feel like we're going crazy. That's a lie of the enemy, and we can cast that spirit of insanity out of us if it tries to attack us. And also the main one is the spirit of fear. We can attack that one too and say, no, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. And fear, doubt, and unbelief are the three spirits that try to attack us. And if we are in those spirits or allow them to come in, we're not believing God and we're not trusting God, so we're sinning. So we want to come against this spirit of fear. And in, uh, there's another scripture in Revelation 3.10 that speaks about uh, keeping his word in the last days if we keep his word we do what he says and we we are righteous in christ jesus he will keep us from the hour of temptation which is the tribulation which shall come upon the earth and it, tr it will try them to dwell on the earth so god is actually sending this to the earth to try to dwell to try them that dwell on the earth because they're disobedient to him and they don't believe him so he's doing the same thing. He wants to try mankind and see who's going to follow him and who isn't. And then also there's a Psalm 91 is a very wonderful Psalm. Um, do you want me to quote that one? Actually, Psalm yes, 91, absolutely. 1 through 7. Yeah, I can go ahead and speak. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he hath delivered thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror of the night and for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. So God is telling you that he is our security. And I love verse 4 because it says he, God says he'll cover us with his feathers under his wings. Now, he, now that is an allegory. And Jesus isn't actually a chicken and we don't go under his wings. <laughs> He's saying that he has a love for us like a... Uh, a, a bird, eagle. a mother bird that cares for an eagle. young. Uh, hmm? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An eagle. Yeah. Gee, God is uh, uh, a parallel with God definitely would be an eagle. And he cares for us with feathers under his wing that we would be under there in, in safety while he's fighting off the enemy. And that's what an eagle does. A mother eagle will take care of its young. And, boy, you better not get near, get near that mother eagle. You're going to be dead. I don't care how big you are. So, <laughs> so, and mothers do have that with their children. You don't go near a mother with her when she feels threatened, her children are threatened. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're 30 feet high. You better be careful. When you get near that mother, you're going to be sorry you did. So God is like that. He is like that. He loves Amen. us. He takes care of us. But there are con yes, yeah, he isn't does. That true, he does take care of us. Yeah, absolutely. But conditions, conditions right? you know, yeah, like you said here in the in the beginning, it says, "He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High." That means you must dwell with the Most High. You must live a life of righteousness, holiness. You must uh, be confessing your sins when you commit them and uh, to repent from them, to turn around and don't ever do them again. And um, 
drawing through God's power, through the Holy Spirit, you can live a sinful life. You can live a life without sin. And this is what God says that we can do through the new birth, the new life, the new person, the new creation which you are, that those who have uh, um, uh, believed on the Lord's name and have been baptized, then uh, he says you're a new person in Christ and that uh, our strength now comes from the Holy Spirit. And so as we, out of obedience and, uh, and, and the desire to want to please God, we, we forsake sin. We do not uh, uh, participate in it. We're not connected to it anymore because every wage of sin brings death. Every time we sin, we get a wage, and that wage is death. brings us further and further apart from God. So we want to make sure that we dwell in the Most High. And where is the Most High? In the heavenlies. We'll be seated with Christ Jesus. Uh, we don't want to go back to that uh, that vomit of sin and, and to uh, water all around in and again. Um, God has freed us from that, from the power of sin. And so when sin comes to try to seduce you again you just say no that's not me that was the old me I'm a new person now in Christ Jesus I don't do that anymore and so what you're doing you're speaking to the devil that's trying to seduce you because the devil the demons when a demon wants to inhabit a body and he wants to become you do so that would be less of you and more of that demon becomes stronger. And we find that the, the Word of God teaches us that, you know, as uh, Jesus' uh, ministry was one-third of the ministry of was deliverance. And when you understand deliverance, you understand how the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so the way how we walk in a, a goodness uh, of life and a life that's blessed and have victorious is for us to live a life as God designed for us to live a life without sin. And so, and so he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We also find in, um, in John chapter 15 that uh, verse 1 um Jesus says that he is the true vine and that his father is the vine dresser. And every branch that's connected to Jesus that does not bear fruit, the vine dresser, God the Father, takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes back so it can bear more fruit. So you're already cleansed because of the word which I have spoken to you, the verse says, but abide in me, in verse 4, and I abide in you. So it's up to us to draw close to Jesus in these times of, of fear, of, of uh, uncertainty, these perilous times in this world. And as we draw close to Jesus, that he draws close to you. He abides in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And so as we uh, abide in Jesus, we draw close to him. We get to know who he is, what he likes, what he doesn't like. We, are, we know what his will is. All this uh, information comes out of his word. And the, and, the, and the place I would start in the scriptures is in the book of John. That tells you who Jesus is, what he will do for you, what he likes, what he doesn't like and uh, how he wants to work through you and show you how to um, to uh, forsake sin and to draw uh, from um, Jesus, his power, his love, and his mercy. And so we find that in John chapter 15, here we are in verse 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And so our responsibility is to abide in Christ, abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me, Jesus says. In verse 5 he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. So we are the branches and Jesus is the vine. And who 
Uh, he who abides in me, Jesus says, I in him bears much fruit. So each day you must be having that fellowship, that relationship with Jesus Christ, talking to him and uh, um, giving him thanksgiving, saying, thank you, Father, for this food. Thank you for the peace that you brought into the land today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you. Be thankful for everything you have, your family, your friends. Uh, thank for um, uh, what God is going to do in the future for you. Just be thankful. God loves to hear that you have a thankful heart and you're expressing that to him. So I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, without Jesus, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. You see, folks, the whole key is bearing much fruit is abiding, drawing close to Jesus, understanding his likes and his dislikes, understanding what pleases him, and then being obedient and fulfilling that pleasing unto him. And what pleases God is faith. That's one of the issues that many individuals have a hard time doing is really walking and living by faith. That's where the devil comes to attack you and bring confusion. He likes to make sure that you don't understand what the scripture really is saying. So you would understand some kind of a false error. And so you think it's biblical, you think it's right, but actually you're practicing, you know, some traditions of man or you walk in an error. So it's really important that we understand that the Holy Spirit brings clearance, clarity to the word of God. And you must also search and find out what the Greek words are so you can understand that passage. I find, don't you, Pastor Valerie, many just try to discern the, the word of God without even doing work of studying what the Greek words and the foundation it is? Yeah, they certainly don't really understand how to go in and study the word of God. Um, it's very important to go into your tools that you have to study the word of God, including your lexicons and your, your, uh, uh, Greek. You can go into a lot of, uh, Greek online that tell you immediately what that Greek word means and, uh, how to, how it's used in that sentence. And that's important in the Greek. There's many, the Greek is not like the English, the English, you know, one word can mean a lot of things. So, that can misdirect us into what the passage means because in the Greek, that word in that passage means a certain particular thing. Not always, but most of the time it does. And then we can understand that passage better because it'll give us a more direct, specific meaning Amen. for that verse. So we have to be well, careful. Well, to give you an that. example here, the meaning of perilous times. We find in 2 Timothy 3, 1, This also know that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, translated the word for perilous times in the verse of Strong's, and that would be G5467, and that would be the number um, attached to the perilous times. And if I'm saying this correctly, it was uh, chalipos, which means... Number one, hard to do, <laughs> hard to take, to approach, hard to bear, troublesome, dangerous, harsh, fierce, and savage. Perilous times means all that. And so what do the words mean to you? Hard to do, hard to take, physically, mentally. Hard to approach, hard to bear, dangerous, harsh, fierce, savage. What do they speak to your heart? You see, this is what's 
we're seeing unfold. Isn't this right, Pastor Valley? This is what I see. We are seeing perilous times unfold, especially here in America, plus also worldwide. It, it, there's such a spirit of chaos, division, up uh, evilness, up yeah, up e up uprooting the righteousness and uprooting God's peace and grace and love, and uh, upheaval in this world is it's happening worldwide. What we find in in um, Matthew 24 it talks about in the last days there will be rumors of wars. And we find this all over. I've never been in such... Um, I believe that we're living in history or making history in the United States for the past 61 years. So I've been living here that um, um, we've been living in, in, in peaceful times. But there is something different about what is happening now. This upheaval that is taking place. And uh, it's, it's stronger uh, in the spiritual realm that Satan's time is about to come to uh, bring a tribulation like there is none that has ever has taken place in this earth. And I believe that within um, now is the time to repent and turn from our ways and to draw close to Jesus because we don't know from one day to the other what will happen. Uh, you were just sharing with me uh, earlier uh, in uh, April, the month of April, especially in the last ending of the last two weeks, there was a, a warning taking place about May 1st. Why don't you share with uh, share with us about that, Pastor Valerie? Well, on the Internet, I had heard that the May 1st uh, at midnight, they were going to be doing some heavy warfare, the Satanists, the elites. They were going to do this during the May Pole Parade for the May 1st, day May 1st. And that it was going to be a lot of occult rituals all over the earth. Uh, and they were coming against uh, the us, you know, in the spiritual realm. And trying to fight the the wave of righteousness that's trying to go through this earth to try to clean up, you know, before Jesus comes back. And to uh, bring people to no the knowledge of the truth of Jesus and eternal life. And all, then they're trying to come against that. They're trying to push their agenda. And it's this push and shove match <laughs> in the heavenlies, and we're seeing it down here on earth. So this was all a part of that. Uh, they're just doing a lot of protests. They they want their agenda to go through, and uh, they they're not going to stop for for President Trump or or for the Christians or for the Jewish people. They're not going to they they want to just push their way through. So this is something that the enemy wants to do, and. Um, I found that I believe there's two ways that we can come against these things. And one is by our will, because the, it, the Lord says that the devil cannot come against your will. And by two is putting on our armor every day. So if we can put on our armor, we put on our armor of God every day. And we, you know, we say we will it. We come against the enemy and he cannot come at us because one of the, main things that I think people are fearing now is the, the battles are not just physical and, and they are spiritual, but also there's mental battles now that we've never seen before. And in these last days, now they have this fallen angel technology and things that are coming along where they can actually attack our minds without us, without us even being aware of it. And that's can be very frightening because you don't feel like you have any way to come against that. If some, evil force can come in and put voices in your head and tell you to do things that you don't want to do and, and all kinds of weird things like that. It's like a sci-fi film, but if, you know, they can actually do it, the only thing that can come against it is our will. We can say no, and we can put on our armor, and the Lord has given us tools to come against these things. So don't be fearful. Don't be fearful about these things. Amen. We should not be fearful of what is about to come. You know, we find in um, in uh, Psalms 91, it says that um, a thousand may fall at your right side, and ten thousand may, yeah, a thousand may fall at your right side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. 
Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all his ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread up the lion and their cobra. The young lion and the serpent shall trample on foot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer, Jesus says. I will be with him in trouble, and will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So folks, we find in the Psalms 91, 1 through 16, I would go ahead and read this day daily to comfort your soul. We must bind fear, doubt, and unbelief from our mind and cast it down. Don't entertain where fear is because fear is sin. Anything that's not faith is sin. In order to please God, you must live by faith. And that's Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. The just shall live by faith. You see, that's what pleases God. He it says it's impossible to please God without faith. But how do you please God? By living by faith, by believing what he says, by trusting in him, doing his commandments, doing his will. That's how we trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's good. (laughs) So, folks, the meaning of perilous times means it's a time of hardship. It's a time of hard pressing in. But with God's help, with God's wisdom, God's understanding, God's instruction and we apply it to our life we can live a life being set free. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Any last Amen. words or comments you'd like to uh, share uh, Pastor Valerie before we end our episode? Oh, I just really you know this is close to my heart because you know I suffered with fear and panic attacks for 17 years of my life and I definitely know what it's like to have that torment at night the demons attacking you daily uh just it was relentless it was horrible it was just overwhelming Mm. and I thought I was in hell and it really was like hell on earth so I've been there done that I know what it's all about and I can tell you there is freedom from it and Jesus can set us free Jesus can set you free of that fear and torment you don't have to live like that that's it you can be set free from that and it's awesome when god comes and sets you free from that well folks we love you remember what isaiah 41 10 says do not fear for i am with you do not be afraid for i am your god i will strengthen you i will help you i will hold on to you with my righteousness right hand Amen. God bless you. We'll be broadcasting tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time, and that would be 7 p.m. Eastern time. Looking forward to see you then. God bless you now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
Luke 418 Radio has been commissioned in these last days to preach Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the only name written under heaven by which men might be saved. Our mission is to teach and train up the body of Christ in the Great Commission to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to cast out evil spirits, pray over the sick, that they may be healed. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. If this program is a blessing to you and you would like to take part in this end-time harvest of souls, Join us by donating online. Go to www.luke418radio.com. God bless you.